Indeed, I, Jean said I, okay. So I've got audio now. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> We're going to start from the top. Uh, so sorry, everyone. Uh, you know, it's our first time. So welcome uh, to LRSD's first ever town hall live event. And um, we're doing our best to learn new technologies and uh, new ways to bring community together. Uh, typically, I'd be in a gymnasium and there'd be a few hundred of you. Uh, but tonight, um, I'm broadcasting from the executive meeting room for 4,100 of you. So before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered is Treaty 1 territory and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Ininawak, and Dakota peoples, and homeland of the Métis Nation. And so welcome, welcome all 4,100 of you. Uh, so I know the camera may make it look like myself and my colleagues in this room are sitting close together, but we've prepared for this broadcast in the same way we prepared each of our 40 schools. We measured out two meters of physical distance between us. And so this is why, according to the science and current government recommendations, I feel free in this environment to remove my mask, following, of course, the proper health and safety protocols. And essentially, this is what we are going to teach each other as staff and our students in the coming days. If two meters of physical distancing is occurring, and it is in all classrooms, all learning spaces in LRSD. We are free to remove our mask while, masks while following the proper guidelines. Over the course of the next 60 minutes, my colleagues on the senior leadership team and special guests will talk about the critical elements of our navigating the 2021 school year plan. I know the pandemic has caused uncertainty and unease or many. So our goal this evening is to provide additional insight and clarity about the plan for a safe return to in-school learning and for continued joy and learning from home. Anyone who's participating in this town hall will have a chance to share their questions in the chat. So let's get this started. If you have downloaded the Teams app, you can see myself and the guests that have joined me in our executive room. On the type top right side of your screen, there's a chat icon you can use to open the chat window. This is where you can write your thoughts or questions this evening. The chat is being moderated because with us this evening, our children, families are joining us. So, we're going to moderate things and eventually you'll see your thought or questions pop up. Everyone will be able to see the published thoughts and questions being shared. We will be answering your questions and responding to your thoughts directly in the chat throughout the evening. A lot of your questions, uh, sorry, a lot of your and a lot of your a lot of your answers, sorry, a lot of the answers to your questions will come throughout the presentation. So we ask you to please hold your questions until about 20, min 20 minutes into the presentation. Now that we've covered how this all works in teams, and I'm hoping it's, it's, it's good for you, I'd like uh, my colleagues who are in the room with me to say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandy Nemeth, uh, past chair as about 24 hours ago of the Green Rail School Division Board of Trustees and the trustee in the board three. I'm very happy that so many of you have made time and have chosen to join us this evening. Welcome to our town hall. Good evening, I'm Louise Johnson, proudly elected board one trustee, currently serving as chair of the New York School Board. My trustee career started as I was elected to the Road School Board in St. Boniface, now LRS. I'm a passionate advocate for public education in the workplace. It's important for you to know that my family and I have always lived in LRSD. My children are graduates of LRSD, and currently my grandchildren are attending LRSD schools. As we set course to reimagine through the worldwide pandemic, I know we will all have anxious and stressful times. This is uncharted territory. Together, through consultation, 
we move forward striving to build respect, earn trust, and create safe and learning and engaging learning places. I truly appreciate the time that you have spent this evening to be part of this important conversation. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Kolachuk and I'm a trustee elected in Ward 4, where I live with my family in Island Lakes. I'm proud to take on the role of the Vice Chair of the Louis Riel School Board for the 2021 school year. And as a trustee, I enjoy engaging with my community and representing them at the board room table. I'm looking forward to working with our board and senior leadership team as we take on a school year like no other in the history of education. I'm excited and proud of what our division has been able to accomplish in order to create a sustainable learning environment for students and staff. I encourage our community to continue to engage and bring concerns and ideas forward. We need to work together in order to accomplish everything that we have set out to do. Thank you for joining us tonight. A small but dedicated team has been hard at work since July to get us to the place we're in today, Wednesday, September 2nd. It's been a tremendous collaborative effort. In the last two weeks, school administrators and support staff have joined the effort, and today all staff are together to contribute to the plan's success. Our multi-year strategic plan has been at the heart of our efforts to designing a safe return to in-school learning and continued productive, healthy in-home learning. Its core values guide our response to the unprecedented challenge of a global pandemic. Those values express themselves as the four strategic priorities. You can see them behind me and on the slide I'm sharing. Creating a culture of belonging that values equity and inclusion. Creating a culture of mastery that values learning and well-becoming. Creating a culture of independence that values inquiry and responsibility. And finally, creating a culture of generosity that values caring and collaboration. One of the important ways we've achieved so much in so little time is strategic and distributed leadership. In July, we established a task force structure. I am now encouraging all 40 schools to establish a parallel structure. And so we're going to use this structure to navigate the next 10 months and this evening's presentation. We have 10 task force teams, so we're going to provide 10 task force updates. So let's hear all about the transportation task force and an exciting update for our high school communities from Audi. Good evening, I'm Audi Pidoke, one of the assistant superintendents and the transportation task force lead. In August, we surveyed the families serviced by our transportation department and found that 20% of our eligible riders were able to make alternate arrangements for this year. This reduction has helped us to focus our efforts on building a solution for the remaining 80% of students who needed school transportation. Our bus schedules have been redesigned to ensure that only students from the same school will be on the same bus together. Many of you are aware that the provincial government changed the mask requirement for school buses only yesterday. We are now requiring all students, regardless of grade level or age, who are they're now required to wear a mask on a school bus. Given the fact that social distancing is not possible on a bus, this new regulation should go a long way to alleviate parental concerns. In addition, the new expectation will help normalize the wearing of masks for all our riders. And I'd like to finish by addressing the concerns expressed by some families of high school students who reside in Sage Creek, Royalwood and Southland Park. We continue to work diligently with Winnipeg Transit Scheduling Department to find creative ways to increase service in impacted communities. And at this time, we know that either the city or Louis Riel School Division will respond to this emerging need. I'm excited to share with you that we are working closely with the city to provide a shuttle service for those impacted communities over the lunch hour. More details will come out next week, but we are working on resolution to the problem. And for all those parents who are waiting for that uh, notorious letter regarding your bus service, you will be receiving that by end of day tomorrow 
or early Friday morning. Thank you. Now let's hear from Jeff. Good evening. I'm Jeff Anderson, Divisional Principal and leader of the Distancing, Cohorting and Movement of Staff and Students Task Force. I know families have been eagerly awaiting school schedules, including their child's cohort. In order to ensure two meters of physical distancing, school Bond. teams and in in all four. Sorry, in order to ensure two meters of physical distancing, school teams in all 40 schools completed extensive space audits over the summer. This resulted in the need to redesign class configurations, teaching assignments, and space allocations. You will be given these details, including the staggered entry date of your child by Friday, September 4th. Here is an example of what a floor plan could look like. We went through each and every space in our 40 schools and measured the square footage of each room to determine the maximum number of students while still adhering to two meters of physical distancing. We also determined how students will enter and exit the rooms. In many cases, spaces that are not typically used for homeroom classes, like band rooms, gymnasiums, multi-purpose rooms, and libraries, will be repurposed for regular instruction. Rest assured, music classes, physical education classes, and library services will continue. They will just look a little different. While the vast majority of Louis Riel schools have adequate space to accommodate all of their students safely, some schools were at or near capacity even before the pandemic began. Not surprisingly, these schools are not able to accommodate all registered students with two meters of physical distancing. In such cases, nearby schools with excess capacity were identified and principals worked collaboratively to find a solution. The visiting cohort of students will function as a school within a school. Teachers and other staff have been transferred from the home school to the satellite location. Careful planning will support students during the transition and address transportation concerns. This repurposing of space requires creative solutions to staffing, scheduling and furnishings, and great flexibility on the part of staff, students and families. Thank you for your help. Now let's hear from Amy Haworth, Principal at Ecole Varenne, with more details about the relocation process. Here we are at Windsor School. Is this the space that your students will be occupying? In fact, it is. We've got this whole wing of Windsor School that's now going to be a satellite station for Ecole Varenne. We're bringing over 69 grade seven and eight students with a complement of teaching staff, EA staff, administrative staff, and some student services. During the first six weeks of school, our focus is really going to be on that trauma-informed approach, really making sure that kids feel safe comfortable and at ease in the new environment. But while we might share a space in an English school, we really do want to preserve the authenticity of our program. We're going to try and minimize cohort mixing. So groups of 75 are going to be as isolated as possible. So our students are going to have their own door. They're going to be in washrooms and any shared facilities. We're going to collaborate with Windsor School in terms of developing schedules to minimize any mixing of the cohorts. Hi, I'm Darcy Cormack, Divisional Principal and Leader of the Learning and Teaching Task Force. Our work has focused on supporting school principals with the creation of diverse teams to teach and supervise cohorts of students with integrated, authentic learning experiences. During the first six weeks of school, teams will focus on building a sense of community amongst learners and a connection with the adults that are supporting cohorts of students. At the high school level, we are working to maintain the opportunity for credit attainment for students to support on-time graduation. 
Working with school teams, we have found creative solutions based on the size of learning spaces for flexible options to allow for the safe and comfortable seating of students across early, middle and senior years classrooms. We are making sure that the design of learning spaces meets the needs of learners while following the safety measures mandated by the province for safe distancing and the cleaning and sanitizing of student workspaces. We have provided an overview of the research and best practices for outdoor learning to support school teams in thinking creatively about land-based learning and the outdoor classroom, as well as reviewing data related to what we learned about students returning to our schools through our summer learning opportunity survey of parents and high school students. We have also gathered feedback about the remote learning experience of our students in grades four through 12 this past spring. The task force has provided the team with an overview of homeschooling in Manitoba and reached out to parents who have indicated on the return to school survey that they would be homeschooling their, ch their children to ensure they have the necessary information and what is expected by the province of those parents who choose to homeschool their children. The Learning and Teaching Task Force is contributing to the creation of LRSD's Learning from Home School to ensure an uninterrupted teaching and learning experience for those students with underlying medical concerns or students with members of their immediate households who have underlying medical concerns that place them at a high risk of contracting COVID. You'll hear more about this exciting uh, Learning from Home option later in the presentation. Now, let's head over to Lavalie School and hear from Principal Shelley Hopper to see how schools in LRSD will welcome students back this fall. Our number one priority is really creating a joyful space for students to learn. We have designed a space for approximately 15 students where students have two meters apart at all times and have the opportunity to move within flexible seating within the space. We have opportunities for EAs and teachers to ensure that disinfecting of spaces is happening before a new student moves into that space. Students not wearing masks in an earlier classroom is something that we thought about in the design of the space as well. We know kids have been away from school for an extended period of time. Time. And we want to make sure that we provide explicit teaching to students so that they are aware of all of the protocols in place to ensure their safety and those of staff within the building. I did miss my teachers, my friends, and music class, and I missed science. I missed Miss Wilton. I'm looking forward to doing my homework and stuff, getting more back to school supplies like Sharpies, markers. Oh, I can't wait to go to school. Good evening, I'm Steve Laurie, Director of Student and Clinical Services and leader of the Wellbeing and Mental Health Promotion Task Force. Wellbeing and Mental Health Promotion are top priorities in our back to school plan. Here are a few of the steps we are taking. First, we are designating a lead clinician from our divisional clinical team to each school to support principals, vice principals and student services teams in planning for well-being and positive mental health for students and staff. Second, we are providing ongoing guidance and support for the mental health promotion teams in all schools. Each school has a mental health promotion committee made up of volunteer members of the school community who are examining practices and building a culture of well-being and success in school settings and in the lives of students and staff. Third, we are providing professional learning and resources to support student and staff well-being. Clinicians have created a return to school resource guide using the circle of courage concepts of belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity. Understanding this Indigenous perspective of well-being and personal development is at the core of our divisional multi-year strategic plan. We will provide training for staff to become trauma-informed to understand, recognize, and respond with sensitivity to the impact of the pandemic. We will provide access to well-being lessons for teachers to use with students to understand how to improve well-being. We will increase awareness and help students, staff and families navigate the large directory of community and online resources. And we will support parents with information to promote the well-being of children and families, including learning to wear a mask and other information to help prepare and support children in their return to school. Now we're going to hear all about the additional staff we will be welcoming to our buildings from Lisa.
Hi, I'm Lisa Aiken, Assistant Superintendent and Leader of the Staffing Needs to Respond to Pandemic Task Force. Over the past several weeks, our task force and members of the Staff Services Department has focused on recruiting and hiring additional staff to ensure the health and safety of our students, of our employees as we all return to school. In response to pandemic planning, we have hired 41 full-time term itinerant support teachers who are assigned to one school to support teaching and learning and will be available to fill in at their school a teacher absence when one occurs. These positions started today. We are also adding classroom and specialty teacher FTE to meet school staffing needs throughout the division. At this time, it is estimated to be around seven teacher FTE. In addition to our typical staffing needs for this time of year, we are in the process of hiring 38 additional educational assistants. We have added just over four FTE of clerical staff and currently we estimate the addition of additional hire of 10 custodial staff and 10 bus drivers. This staffing is above and beyond our budgeted staffing for this school year. As a result of the pandemic, one of the measures the division is taking to minimize the risk of COVID-19 is to reduce the number of schools assigned to a teacher. As of today, 64 teachers who worked in more than one school location have, be, have been reassigned to one school. We are also reassigning other employees, including educational assistants and clerical staff. To minimize the working location of our substitute staff, we are hiring substitute teachers and educational assistants who will be assigned to work in one school location to support staff absences. At this time, there are 122 substitute teachers assigned to a school location who will fill teacher absences and 123 educational assistants assigned to a school location to fill EA absences. All staff have returned to school today and over the next three days they will review the information and expert and expectations of LRSD's plan, including safe work procedures and COVID-19 protocols and to finalize their school specific preparedness plan. All 245 substitute employees joined school staff at their allocated school today for training as well as our school mentors, monitors and lunch and bus supervisors. We continue to receive substitute teacher and EA applications and we'll continue to hire these valuable employees and provide them with training before assigning them to a school. Our goal is to continue to assist our schools in meeting staffing needs throughout the upcoming days, weeks and school year. Now we'll hear from Marlene. Good evening everyone, I'm Marlene Murray, Assistant Superintendent and Leader of the Response to Symptoms and Infection Task Force. Lure Rail School Division is implementing all protocols and procedures outlined by Manitoba Education and public health officials. We check in daily for updates and new direction and are continually updating our back to school plan. We've developed safe work procedures for applying and removing masks, hand hygiene practices, students requiring close proximity and assistance, and students and staff showing symptoms. The division will be providing masks for every student and staff. Disposable medical masks are being distributed to schools and departments this week. Now reusable masks will arrive by mid-September and staff working with students in close proximity will also be provided with gowns, goggles and face shields. We've received clarity on how to respond to COVID-19 cases in our schools. And as you can see on this slide, at every step of the way, public health officials will be leading the response and communicating with those that must self-isolate. If a student is directed to self-isolate, they will be supported by their homeroom teacher to continue learning. You will be able to find all of this information on pro the province of Manitoba's website, but we're also going to be posting it on our website in the coming days. And so now we're going to hear about infrastructure requirements from Amavir. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amavir Pandari. Director of Facilities, Maintenance and Transportation, and I'm also the leader of Infrastructure and Custodial Requirement Task Force. Ventilation has been a topic of discussion over the past couple of weeks. In LRSD, we have hired a contractor to perform a comprehensive review of fresh air supply 
on all the air handlers and HVAC units in all of our schools. To date, we have completed 32 out of 42 schools and we are going to be completing the remaining by Friday. Prior to the school start, all the filters will be changed in every school building and every unit will have a sticker to record the date of filter change. Fresh air dampers have been also adjusted so that the units can call for 100% fresh air. We're also testing all operable windows to ensure classroom windows can open to allow more fresh air in the classroom. Windows for 29 schools have been checked and the remaining will be completed by this Friday. Work orders have been issued to repair windows, hardware, replace or install screens for 15 schools. To ensure a frequent hand washing for our students, we are also looking at installing additional hand wash sinks at 17 schools where limited hand wash sinks are currently available. In the meantime, sanitizer supplies will be provided to all schools. To support increased frequency of cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing of our school facilities, additional custodial staff will be hired and casual lunch and bus supervisors will be assigned to help with disinfecting high touch surfaces. We have also sourced, ordered, and are in process of distributing Health Canada approved cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing supplies to all our schools. Many of our high school students will be learning in an outdoor classroom when weather permits. Let's head to college, John Survey, and hear from Principal Elian Mishlik to see how that might look. One of the things, that, the challenges for any school really is going to be maximizing space in the school. We're lucky at, at Gen Sauve because we do have these incredible spaces that were created. So when we did expand the school a couple of years ago, some of the outdoor classroom spaces were created. And this is a perfect example of one of those spaces. It allows us to be able to space our students two meters apart. And so a challenge that I've given our teachers will be to utilize this space when they can and in, in, in the best ways that they can. What's nice is that the division has worked very hard to make sure that we do have connectivity. So the students that would be using this space or the space over there or the front of the school will have Wi-Fi connection. As you've heard from the task force teams so far, a lot of work has been going on to ensure the safe return of students and staff for the 2021 school year. A task force I'm a member of is the communication task force. And um, of course, all of this good work would go unnoticed if it weren't for communication. And uh, this good work uh, also requires two-way communication. We need to listen to the needs of the community in order to be effective. And so an important aspect of our planning has been that listening, listening to your questions, feedback and concerns. You've shared your thoughts through hundreds of emails, phone calls and social media posts. We've reviewed every single message, message to ensure we understand your perspective as we continue to work toward a solution. I understand our navigating the 2021 school year plan is quite comprehensive and consequently quite lengthy. Our plan is continually revised and updated as new information or direction is provided. And I understand it can be challenging, daunting to stay on top of what has changed. You'll notice on our website that uh, we've started to break down the plan into shorter and more focused spotlight stories. Hopefully this makes it easier to find the information that matters to you. Hopefully this evening is an example of our attempting to find multiple ways to communicate and to listen. Because of the unpredictability of the pandemic, we have at times had to share important information without having all the answers or delay uh, information coming to you because we want to find those answers. So regrettably, this will continue to continue to be the case going forward. But we're going to do the best we can to get the information out to you as soon as we can. And we thank you for your patience and understanding. Now let's turn to our financial support task force and the team lead Marna. Good evening, everybody. I'm Marna Kenny, secretary treasurer and leader of the financial support task force. 
We have been working to make sense of the impact of COVID on the division's finances. We had savings in the spring as a result of the sus of suspension of in-class learning, but now we are planning for all of the additional expenses that we expect to incur as we open schools on September 8th. We are currently identifying budget areas that can be reduced as a result of how some programs will be delivered this year and are redirecting some of those funds to support LRSD's COVID-19 efforts. The most significant additional expenditures are related to both teaching and non-teaching salaries, increased transportation requirements to respect physical distancing, technology, cleaning and sanitizing supplies, providing classrooms with required supplies and furnishings, and modifying other spaces to make them suitable to use as classrooms. There are still also many unknown costs at this time since we are still trying to understand what all of the needs will be. Good news, this past week, the provincial government announced $52 million in new funding for school divisions in the province, and the federal government announced $2 billion to be, to be made available for educational needs across Canada to address costs related to the pandemic. We at Louis Riel have been in communication with the provincial government about our funding realities, and they have shown their support with the recent announcement of the new funding. Now, let's hear some exciting updates about technology from Clark. Good evening, I'm Clark Hagan, Director of Information Services and the leader of the Blended Learning and Technology Task Force. I would like to thank the other members of this for a task force, which is Darcy Cormack, Marna Kenny, and Greg Saki. Technology and access to that technology has been key during this pandemic. We understand the challenges faced when we move from online learning in the spring, and we've been working hard since then to enhance our blended learning strategy. Professional development for staff will continue this year, just like it did in the spring, and we hope this will help teachers and students utilize technology in their learning because it's so vital for this school year in, in the fall. Lou Riel has a healthy supply of student laptops, but at the same time, we also strongly encourage students to bring their own personal devices to school. Currently, all of our high school students bring personal laptops to school, and we encourage families and students in grades five through eight to also consider this option. We also continue to work at a unified communication strategy. Microsoft Teams and our class MySite system with Parent Portal will continue to be our main focus for communicating with two parents and students this year. Microsoft has made some major enhancements to Teams over the summer, and we really can't wait for you, your students to experience all these new features. And lastly, we've also entered a, an agreement with Nelson Textbooks. Uh, they have a, a learning platform, a digital learning platform called Edwin. Uh, LRSD has partnered with, with Nelson to provide this platform. Uh, it has um, curriculum content for grades six through nine, uh, and it's aligned to the Manitoba curriculum. So their learning resources will be made available to any teacher who wants to have access to it and their students. We've also have a, has a, have a part two of this, of this project where we've acquired from Nelson an additional 650 laptops to be used in the grade seven and eight classes for teachers and students in a one-to-one -one, uh, fashion where students can also use those technology at school and at home. Now here's some more information about how we're leveraging technology to support in school and online learning. For students that need to work from home, we have a learning from home program that we're just getting going. It's just outside these doors actually where we have teachers right now collaborating. The goal there is for students who either for medical reasons can't come to school or they have family members that can't come to school. We want to provide through grades one through eight a learning environment that they can continue their learning when they're at home. The learning platform that we're going to use with these students is Teams, Microsoft Teams. And with that, we, that supports synchronous, asynchronous learning. It allows for project-based learning and it gives students the ability to learn at their own pace. We made a partnership with Nelson Textbooks when they have a program called Edwin, which is a virtual learning environment that students and teachers can leverage. For students that don't have access to Wi-Fi or to technology, uh, Louisville School Division will continue to provide access for internet. We will continue to provide, provide laptops where necessary. And so um, that's it for our task force updates. Um, you may have noticed uh, that a few of our task forces referenced LRSD's learning from home school. 
uh, in that last video was all about the staff uh, busily building that uh, learning from home school. So I'm, I'm so excited and proud to announce that we will offer a robust and fully staffed learning from home option in both English and French immersion for students who require it. The learning from home school supports students that are advised by their physician to pursue online learning. And that includes immunocompromised members of the immediate household. Student re students registered for the learning from home school will receive at home instruction with real time live teaching and pre recorded lessons for the 2021 school year from a designated teacher and support from an instructional intern. Students will remain registered at their home school in addition to being registered with the learning from home school. So far, 635 students in K-12 received registration information for the Learning From Home School this week, and we expect that number will continue to grow over the coming days. Based on what our community is saying, I know there's a desire to offer this Learning From Home School to any student or family that wants it. At this time, we are obligated to follow the direction the province of Manitoba has provided, and we're going to provide this option to those who have been advised by their physician to pursue accommodation. Hopefully, this, uh, hopefully, this presentation so far, I'm sorry, I'm multitasking right now. I'm being asked to multitask and I've got to talk and switch the screen at the same time. So bear with me. Um, this, uh, and continue to talk. Um, and so, but I'm also sharing my notes. Uh, so, uh, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, so, hopefully, um, so let me get back to where I was going about the uh, the learning from home school. And you'll you'll beg my forgiveness. Uh, this is our first town hall, and and you, you've been patient about the technical difficulties. No sound at the start, and now my fumbling with my laptop. Uh, but to bring back the focus to the learning from home school, um, what I'm hoping uh, is for those who wished this were an option, that uh, the presentation this evening so far has reaffirmed the level of effort that's gone into making in-school learning as safe and as productive and as joyful as possible. All this hard work wasn't unreasonable hard work and we found the wherewithal to get the job done by listening by listening to you our community and so one way we listen we've listened throughout the summer is uh, by using the thought exchange platform it's this um, funky social media like platform that uh, is moderated and uh, allows us to and analyze the thinking in some interesting ways. So let, let's take a look at some of those results. So this is the reason I was fumbling just a second ago because I have to share my desktop now and and then and uh, and live I've got to show you what I'm able to see. And so uh, hopefully this is working. Uh, you can see that I've opened up the uh, discovery dashboard of the thought exchange on my browser and so I can see at a glance that uh, We've had so far 3,637 of you take part in the uh, in the thought exchange. That's wonderful. And uh, the thought exchange will stay open until Friday. So I hope we can double the number between now and Friday. That's my uh, that's my target for you this evening. Uh, so we've had 4,792 thoughts shared and um, and how it works is you share a thought and then you get to read other thoughts and uh, share your appreciation of those thoughts. So we've had 179,477 engagements with those thoughts. And so you can see here how, how it breaks down. Not all participants Participants share a thought. That's OK. You can just star thoughts and um, we can see the breakdown here um, of, of who's participated so far. So 26% of staff have participated so far, uh, just 1% of students. So if there are students on the call uh, on the call this evening in the live event, uh, parents in the live event do encourage your young person to uh, engage and 73%. Uh, the vast majority have been parents and guardians. 
So let's just have a look at what I can do with uh, the technology. So at a glance, the machine creates this word cloud based on uh, the thoughts that are shared. And uh, the words are sized based on the star rating of the thoughts uh, they appear in. And so let's have a look at under the word smaller. We have the top flip thought, uh, the top star thought, which was smaller class sizes, reduce the number of children in one space for a prolonged period of time to reduce the possibility of transmission. And, um, and so here's a, a quick example of what the machine can do. Um, another way we interact uh, with uh, the thinking that's being shared is by theming results. And so we themed all of the thoughts according to our task forces. And uh, here again, if I click on one of the, on one of the uh, task forces, I get the top thought. So related to symptom, symptom and infection response, we had a top thought here in terms of how it was starred about how one, one wants to be notified if someone in the school tests positive for COVID-19. And so we've been listening, the government has as well, and some really important information is it's making its way home uh, this week about symptoms and how we're going to track everything. And I'm just going to touch on the last bar. Um, the machine actually wanted us to share the fact that uh, people do appreciate the work we're doing. So it's great. It's great to feel appreciated. Uh, it's great that uh, you acknowledge the effort. I'm so grateful. So there you have it. That's thought exchange. It's um, and I'm going to stop sharing my desk. Oh. And um, I'm now going to open it up to um, the live event Q&A. Uh, that's where we are in terms of the presentation. We're, uh, we're nearing the end. We're at the three quarter mark and uh, we're going to now um, look at uh, the FAQ, uh, the Q&A, sorry, in the live event. And uh, you can see it, I can see it, and I'm going to look to a thought. Um, I see here a thought uh, and I see some thumbs up uh, going uh, rapidly. Uh, so the question is, what if children get sick throughout the school year? Will teachers be prepared to send home packages of homework so they don't fall behind before being allowed to return? Great question. Um, and so indeed, depending on um, the nature of the illness, um, Things will look no different in 2021 than they did before the pandemic. Uh, if children are away uh, for a, a limited uh, period of time, um, will the local school, the classroom teacher will look after things. But unlike other years, uh, my hope is, is that we're going to continue to leverage technology in ways that we hadn't. Uh, what the pandemic has, has required of all of us is that we really leverage technology um, and get better at that. And, uh, and so my hope is that um, if, you're, if your child is, is at home ill for a limited period of time, they'll be using their laptops at home or will borrow a laptop from school and connect uh, to the classroom in those ways. And if it's beyond and if, if it extends to a longer period of time, well, again, we've got this wonderful infrastructure we've built over the last uh, month. Uh, I mean, honestly, essentially, it was an idea in a few of our heads in July and August, and only in the last uh, couple of weeks has it really taken life by having uh, a staff come together and create our learning from home school. En français, on appelle ça l'école apprendre chez soi. It's going to be a bi fully bilingual French immersion in and English program school. So I hope that answers the question. Let's have a look at another one. George K is asking, uh, will students participating in remote learning have access to a school laptop if required? And so indeed, if it's required, if, uh, if the family uh, uh, requires our support, we'll make that happen. Uh, that will be a part of uh, being registered for the learning from home school. But also, as I've just described, uh, something we want to make available to uh, to to, to, uh, to children, to students, to young people. So the key for us in LRSD will be this collective effort, um, where 
if families uh, are already providing for their children uh, laptops or iPads, uh, please trust us when we say, we're say we say your children can bring these to school. Uh, we've, we've had uh, bring your own devices um, uh, happening in our high schools for some years now and uh, and uh, trust us that uh, those devices will be safe uh, no matter the setting. And uh, in so doing, uh, we will then, where we need to make the devices we have in schools available to those who need them. And so together, we'll, we'll, we'll make for a more equitable and inclusive uh, community. Let's have a look at another question. Um, a question here asking, you're opting for in-school learning. If we change our minds, no longer want our child to attend school in person. Can we switch to homeschooling? How would that work? Is there a deadline to switch? So at present, as I suggested in the presentation, if your child for medical reasons shouldn't be in school or if someone in the home uh, for medical reasons requires that your child stay at home, we have this um, school, this um, learning from home school. Uh, and, uh, and again, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, if if that's not the case, if it's if if it is, of course, I understand the anxiety uh, folks are feeling, but I'm hoping the presentation has 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 reassured you that uh, we've really been busy July and August making our spaces as safe as possible, where two meters of distanciation distancing, Pam, I'm. Uh, is is uh, has been designed into all of the spaces in our 40 schools. Children, students, young people and their teachers and staff are going to be in learning spaces where just like in this room, there are far fewer people around this table than before the pandemic. And so what that means is. Um, according to the latest science, it means we don't have to wear the mask in those spaces. And um, we can we can enjoy learning and uh, and being together uh, in the coming ten months. Let's move on. I'm 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 being I'm being reminded that I can get kind of wordy here. Let's have a look at another question. Uh, if my child is enrolled at learning from home school, are they permitted to return to their physical school if the pandemic is over before the school year? Great question. So. Uh, with respect to the learning from home school, if um, right now it's for medical reasons, it is going to be for as long as we're in the pandemic. And so whether that's a year or more. And, um, um, and, and so that's the answer to that question. Great question. Um, let's go on to another question. Will the students be bringing their provided reusable masks from home to be cleaned, or will they stay at school for sanitizing each day? Can a student use their own mask? Great question. So, uh, with respect to reusable masks that families may have already purchased, and we'll be providing more information in terms of our effort to provide reusable masks to uh, staff and, and families in LRSD. Um, we really won't have the, um, the, the ability to clean masks uh, at the end of the day. So that really will be a, a personal family requirement to, uh, to, to bring the masks home every day and to wash them. They really do have to be washed every day and cared for. And, uh, and again, that'll be a part of the, uh, the curriculum, the, uh, the teaching and learning in the next few days, starting on Monday uh, of next week. Uh, that along with a lot more in terms of very important learning uh, and teaching around um, how to stay safe and healthy, uh, but also happy uh, as we continue to navigate this pandemic. Uh, let's go on to uh, another question. Uh, will all students be spaced out in separate desks? Oh, so great question. Uh, great question there about how how will space function and so you saw that video where we had um, we had uh, that video that was shot at Lavalley School on Monday where 
we uh, we had the, the kids in the classroom and you could see how it's um, really the lesson has been in terms of designing our spaces. The lesson has been less is more where early on we were actually thinking, OK, we've got to get rid of all this modern furniture and bring back all of these desks as though it were 1960. But it, it really isn't that at all. It's about uh, looking our, looking at our spaces, designing classrooms, uh, looking at a classroom uh, floor plan and thinking in thirds or quarters in terms of the design of that space and a variety of seating. And a teacher essentially uh, quickly being able to, when looking at a third of the space or a quarter of the space, checking to see that kids are are keeping two meters apart, and uh, and so that uh, and so that kids can move around throughout the day and get movement breaks that are safe, and uh, and sitting at different spots and uh, standing or laying on the floor, uh, because these are all the ways we find comfort to be able to focus and learn uh, productively. Let's have a look. Questions. I might call on others in the uh, in the live event. Uh, answer a question. Uh, my child goes to daycare in the elementary school. Uh, have any consideration considerations been made to ensure that the cohort will be maintained between the school and the daycare? And that's a great question, right? Uh, how does cohorting in a school work in relationship to buses, in relationship to daycare, et cetera? So why don't I call on uh, Marlene to talk about daycares? Good evening. Uh, our daycare service providers in the schools and our school administration are working very closely on coordinating um, shared practices. And so uh, we are also looking to the organization for daycares for their structures about uh, keeping the cohort within the daycare um, contained. Um, so the daycare group is considered to be a, a cohort that stays together. Uh, entrances are designated and separated from the school population uh, coming and going. And so uh, that requires a good deal of coordination at the school level between daycare staff and school administration to support that planning. And that has been well underway with uh, our daycares uh, returning uh, in June and preparing for increasing enrollment and return of students through July and August. So uh, we have had great success with everyone connecting and, and making good planning uh, decisions at the school level. Thanks, Marlene. Um, let's have a look at another question in the Q&A. I see lots and lots of questions. I know we'll, we won't be able to get to all of them uh, in this way, in this format, but we're going to get to all of them, I promise, uh, in writing. Um, so. Will masks have to be used by children in younger grades, for example, a three, four combined grade? Um, grade? Grade four is mandated, but, but not grade three. How is this going to work? OK, so this is a great question again. So first things first, in LRSD, after two months of hard work, and that's really not an exaggeration, that is what it took, uh, because it takes a lot of creative thinking, we achieved Cam. <laughs> Two meters of uh, distancing between children, young people, and adults in learning spaces. And so it means that um, you, the, the mask isn't required. You know, that isn't to say some might feel they want to wear the mask to feel safe, and we're going to work through all of that, and we're not going to have anyone feel uh, they can't wear a mask. And so it's going to be about developing culture in a classroom, developing norms around all of that. And uh, there's a lot of learning to be done in terms of the mask and how to wear the mask and take off the mask uh, in ways that are safe and appropriate. And so there are points in time in the day when a mask will be required because we can't be sure that there might be some crowding and uh, kids and adults might be in closer proximity for extent, extended periods of time. 
and on buses, of course. Uh, what we're saying in kindergarten to grade three is um, we're going to work on the same curriculum we're going to work on with respect to masks that we're working on in grades four to 12. And at the end of the day, if as a community we agree that it's everyone wears a mask and we believe in even a kindergarten child can learn to wear a mask, uh, we're going to do it because that will have been the community agreement. And, uh, and, uh, and I know that's the way LRSD works. We come together as a community and come to agreement. Um, and so it's, uh, it's 7.57. I'm told it's time to wrap up, Christian. I know I could go on answering questions, uh, as I do uh, late into the night, as I did yesterday with the board at its first board meeting of the year. Um, it went well past eight o'clock. It was 9.30 when we uh, we said goodbye. And um, but we'll leave it at this. Uh, you're, I see 1,085 questions, and the number keeps creeping, uh, popping up uh, every second. And so we're tracking all of your questions, and we're uh, we're going to we're going to make sure to get back to you all. Um, and um, and, uh, and so essentially what's going to happen is after the town hall this evening, we're going to be publishing an FAQ to the website that touches on uh, the questions you've asked tonight and the questions we've been uh, answering for the last couple of months. And um, also I know that schools will be sending out uh, school specific plans by Friday. So hopefully that will also bring additional clarity and as part of those plans are some really important circulars from the province that will, will, will provide a great deal of clarity as well. So again, if you have any questions at any time, please reach out, reach out to us, reach out to your school principal, reach out to your teacher. Uh, we're there to serve you. I hope this evening's town hall, uh, despite the uh, the initial glitches, it's really it's our first time. Um, uh, has honored the amazing collective effort that's gone into our planning so far. Two words have been at the heart of our efforts, kindness and community. And so we want and believe everyone in LRSD is going to thrive in 2021 and every school community will flourish, even under these extraordinarily challenging circumstances. The answer to navigating 2021 comes from seeing and seeking opportunity. It's about resilience. It's about agility. It's about creativity and an even stronger sense of community. And boy, have we risen to the challenge so far. And so as we continue to rise to that challenge, the challenge that, that the pandemic presents through individual and collective hard work and innovation, I have no doubt, no doubt, that this unique time that brings us all together also will bring out the best in each and every one of us and will be the catalyst for positive and lasting change. So do take the time to respond to our exit survey. We, uh, we, uh, we're going to be sending you a link. I think the link is even in the chat. Um, it's really important that you take the time, and I promise it's quick. It only takes seconds. Three questions. Was this thing of any value? Was the town hall uh, any good at all? Be honest. Uh, do you want another town hall in a month from today? Yes or no? And uh, whether you say yes or no, uh, how can we improve on this evening's town hall? I'm an educator, I'm a learner, and uh, I know I can do better, uh, but I'm only, gonna, I'm only gonna do better if I listen and you let me know how I can. So I wanna thank you for joining us tonight and to let you know we continue to listen and to serve the community to the best of our abilities. Be well, everyone.